Hello, welcome to Stolting's YouTube channel. Today we'd like to present the QSI, the Quintessential Stereotaxic Injector, and give you a little bit of instructions and information about it. All right, to begin, I'd like to show you how to load a syringe into the injector head portion of the QSI. I have the injector head kind of sitting on the table here. It's very simple. Take the plunger end of the syringe, put it into this top slot, loosen the screw first, simply move it down and insert the flanges of the syringe into this slot here. And then while it's resting in this indentation, simply move the holder over. And while holding it down, you can simply just tighten this moderately to loosely. You don't need a tight, tight hold with that. And then simply at the top, uh, put pressure on, lightly onto the top of the plunger end of the syringe. And that's it. Very simple to load this syringe. Also, when using this syringe head, we have two markations up at the top where the, the travel of the syringe is taking place. Please be careful not to go beyond these two lines, and that could damage the syringe head. All right, once you've loaded the syringe into this injector head, it's quite simple to attach it to, this, to the stereotaxic manipulator arm. Simply take the thumb screw that's right here that is included with the injector head that's going to already be attached and simply drive it into the slot onto the manipulator arm. Tighten it so it's thumb tight and it'll line up perfectly with the stereotaxic frame. Uh, other adjustments can be made here by loosening the screw with an included Allen key and by sliding the stainless steel post up and down you can adjust the height of the injector head. All right, now that I've shown you how to load the syringe into the injector head, I now want to explain some of the functions associated with the control box, the touchscreen control box. So right here, I've just turned on the power button. You saw the little Stolting logo. That's about a five second uh, screen that pops up. And now we're at our home page. And on the home page, you'll find the information that's associated with the default settings of the QSI control box. Here you have time left, time pause, rate, and the type of syringe and the volume. Over here on the right at the bottom, you'll see that by pushing the button down here, you manually can move the syringe down. By pushing the, the button over here, you can manually move the syringe plunger head up. Play is simply driving, you know, whatever the program is. So to change these features, it's quite simple. You go into setup, and here you uh, start. We'll start here with the ID. The ID is the inner diameter of the syringe. So whatever syringe you're using, you can manually type it in. It's quite simple by just touching into the box, going over to the backspace button, and putting whatever number you want into it. This will change and call this custom ID. The more useful feature is to use our library. By touching here, you'll see on the left side are the various volumes associated, all in microliters. These are the micro syringes offered by Hamilton. Uh, you can choose from 25 to 10. The, ones, the one I just showed you on how to load the syringe was the Neuros, um, was the Neuros syringe. So that simply tells me the description and then the inner diameter size. And if I hit OK, it populates that into that box there and puts in the proper ID. So that's you, that is the easiest way. Uh, now you just need to select your volume. Same thing, touch into the box, backspace, hit 5 or 2 or whatever number you want. Select microliters, UL or NL for nanoliters. Rate is the same, 5 backspace, eight, and now you have your uh, volume and rate all set. One thing to note on here, when you're touching in the button and you're getting ready to change, it'll tell you based on your selection, your syringe selection, what is your maximum volume. Same thing with rate. It'll give you your minimum, your minimum and your maximum rate of infusion. 
And if you exceed that, for example, if I put in 85 and I say OK, it alerts me with a red box around there saying something is wrong. You've put in too little or too much of a rate that cannot possibly be done with this syringe. So you simply go back and change. And once you're done with that, you're good. And then the other features associated with this screen is infusion or withdraw. So you have both options available to you. This is uh, an, an alarm or an indication whenever you're done with your program, it'll sound. If you'd rather not have any sound come on, just simply touch there and that'll turn off the sound. And then one nice little uh, cosmetic feature is the look. Here you can change the different styles depending on what, uh, you know, if you have a particular color in mind. Our favorite here is the hot dog stand. So, and once you're done with all of your programming, hit OK. Check that everything's OK there. We hit OK. And now we're back to that home page screen showing what we had programmed. So time left, meaning the, the rate and the um, volume that we selected gives us an 8 microliter per minute infusion rate. This was the volume we selected over here onto the right. This is the syringe we, we selected. So you can see everything that you've selected on the setup screen right here and make any corrections that you might need to make. And finally, the last page would be the info page. This is just showing you kind of that opening screen that I showed that uh, when you turn it on will, will appear for about five seconds. And then once everything looks okay, you can hit play and it'll start the infusion in progress. And that's it, very simple, very easy to use. All right, so now that I've shown you how the touchscreen works with a single injector head attached, the QSI is capable of having two injector heads attached. And you'll see here on the screen that now you have a split screen associated with syringe one and syringe two, or injector one, injector head one and injector head two. And you will notice on the syringe one screen, this is what we just programmed previously. Now, if I want to do the same type of program with syringe number two, it's quite easy. I can simply go into setup and go same as number one. And it'll change all of the parameters that were the default back to what we had programmed in syringe number one. And then simply hit OK. And now we're ready to go for syringe number one versus syringe number two. Obviously, you can change and have independent settings for each of these. Also, they will not work simultaneously. If you're going while you're using one, the other will not will be inactive and be in, unable to access it. But otherwise, you do have the ability of running two uh, two injector heads at, um, at different times with the one control box. All right, and I'd like to show you the back side of the QSI touchscreen control box. Over here, you will see the power on off switch. This is the power adapter slot where you put in a 24 volt power supply that comes with the system. The reset button can be used if the screen starts to malfunction or act up. Simply put a paper clip in there to reset it. Uh, but call uh, Stolting technical support and we'll give you ins further instructions on that. And then here are the two ports for the two injector heads. This is uh, port number one and port number two. And then finally this last part is, is a way for updating the firmware in the field if necessary. Please call technical support if you have any issues, but this will not be, this is for repairs only. Thank you for listening and learning more about the QSI, Quintessential Stereo Taxic Injector. If you need more information, please go to our website, www.stoltingco.com, or you can call us at 630-860-9700. Thank you, and please check out our other videos.